All right, let's walk through some of the parts and pieces in um, just a description of the physical printer. Um, we like to do this so that we have a common base of language. Uh, when you're talking to us in support or elsewhere, we're calling things the same thing. That helps resolve a lot of potential confusion. So, front of the printer. Uh, first thing we have is the main door or the print chamber door. This is the obviously the door to the print chamber. There's a cutout here in the metal. This is where you grab it to open it. This is your print chamber, obviously. This door does have a magnetic switch to tell the printer if it's open or closed. By default, the printer will, will not allow you to run a print with the door open. That's a safety feature. That is something you can disable in the settings. And we'll talk about that later. Over here we have the filament bay. This is where we have hold the filament while we're running a print. Again, you've got to cut out the bottom to open the door. That opens up. We'll talk more about the contents of this uh, area in a few minutes. The last major, two more major things we have on the front of the printer. You have the LCD here. This is obviously, it gives you status updates. You can interact with the machine through this. On the control panel, we also have a button labeled stop and reset. This is equivalent to, a, to an emergency stop button or an e-stop button. If you press this button, it all of the activity in the printer stops. The motors are de-energized, the heaters are shut off. We don't remove power to the machine because it actually puts it in a more dangerous state. Um, because we want to keep fans running if the print head is hot and we want to be able to remove energy, but it de-energizes the motors and de-energizes the heaters, so it puts the printer in a safe state. Um, if you hit this, you will also see the screen go through a rebooting or reconnecting cycle, um, so you'll see things flash and cycle through and show some weird data for a second. The last thing on the front is the power switch down here, and um, in our startup and setup process, we already talked about that, but basically it's very simple. You turn it on to turn the machine on, turn it off to turn it off. That power switch is also a breaker, so if the machine um, draws too much current, it will shut off the printer, so that's a safety feature. One last feature on the front of the printer is the USB port, also under the LCD here. If you don't have the printer on a network, this is how you're going to transfer files to the printer to print them, and you're just going to take a normal USB key and insert it into the port like that. On the right side of the machine here, we have the electronics based service door. So if you need to access the electronics in the printer to work on something or repair something or add something, this is the panel you're going to take off to do that. We also have the lift point here, and there's a match one on the left side. And this is where you're going to put your fingers to pick up the machine. On the left side of the machine, we really just have two features here. We have the exhaust fan for the print chamber. And this is a fan that pulls air out of the print chamber. Uh, we do this for a couple reasons. One is it controls airflow through the machine. And so that way we're not leaking. We know where the fumes and the um, heat is going to come out of the machine. It's going to come out right here versus everywhere. Um, and we're pulling air in through various you know, openings and crevices. Uh, it also allows us to filter this. So on the inside of this fan, there's a um, HEPA and carbon filter that can help remove particulates and fumes um, that occur during printing. Much like the right side, we also have a lift point here, and that's all we have on this side. On the back of the machine, we have a little bit more going on. The first thing here is a rear service panel. So if you need to get into the rear of the machine and do maintenance, you're going to take this panel off. This machine is an older one, so we've got a couple features here that are not going to be on, on your printer. You won't have these little cutouts here. In the bottom corner here, we have a number of things going on. We have obviously your power inlet, your networking inlet. We have an exhaust fan for the electronics bay. And again, that's pulling air in from the front of the machine and exhausting it to the rear. We have your serial number tag. So if you contact support, we're going to ask you for the serial number on this tag. You also have an, a cutout here. This cutout is for accessories such as our stack light. So if you order a printer with a stack light installed, um, it's going to come with it installed, we're going to do it for you, and the wire is going to come out of the electronics bay here, and then you can position it wherever you need to. Alright, lastly, you'll notice a big cutout on the cart here. Now, we didn't do this in the video because, frankly, we didn't think that far ahead, but this is for routing the power cord. So, on the side of the cart here, you've got a hole to feed the power cord in, and then you route the power cord up through the cart, out this hole, and then into the printer. And this just keeps the power cord out of the way, it makes it a little bit cleaner, and it keeps you from running it over with the cart. 
One last feature on the top of the printer is the top window. This is removable and it's held in place by magnets. So you just reach in from the underside and push it out. Again, this makes service easy um, or if you just need access to the print bay from the top for something. Obviously, if you're running uh, higher temperature materials, ABS, um, nylons, polycarbonates, uh, you want to make sure that window is in place because it helps retain the heat. Alright, so the contents of the filament bay, we have uh, three main features. One is the extruder. This is what actually grabs the filament and feeds it up to the print head. So this is what does the work of pushing the filament up to the print head. Back here we have what we call the bed probe motor assembly. This deploys and, well, it actually deploys and retracts our remote bed probe. And so this motor rotates. And then in the filament bay, you see behind the print head, that little pin deploys and retracts. And we use that for leveling the bed and for calibrating the nozzle offset. Lastly, down here, we have our filament, spool of filament and our filament rollers. And we talked about a little bit this, excuse me, we talked about this a little bit in our first print video, but this is where you put your filament roll for your larger spools. You move this one back there. Inside the print chamber, uh, we've got a lot going on. So here in the middle is our print head assembly. This is the business end of the 3D printer. We've got the print head on it. We've got a print cooling blower. So the purpose of this is to direct uh, not necessarily cold but slightly colder air onto the print as it's being printed. The objective is to control the amount of thermal energy in the material. Um, back here we've got some wiring that comes in. This is our bed probe um, feed wire. This is our electrical wire. Uh, on the back here we've got what we call the printhead breakout board. So this is where we come in with a bunch of wiring and go from our 8 pin to break it out into the various components. Uh, let's see, this rail here is the, I'll show it on this side, this is the x-axis rail. And then over here on the side is our, we have two y-axis rails, if I can find it. There it is. So this is a y-axis rail and there's a mirror on the other side. Also up here is our print chamber filter. So this is what uh, filters the air as we exhaust it from the printer. To change this, you just pull one of the release tabs and then the assembly comes off. You put it on as basically the reverse. Just snap it over and make sure it's square and centered. Also in the back of our print chamber here are our X and our Y motors. We have one here and then one on the, si over the other side over here. Let's talk about the Z-axis. So we're going to start with our print surface here. We've got glass installed. This is clamped to our tool plate, which is our flatness reference. For glass, it's not so critical, but for our other interchangeable and removable, removable bed surfaces, uh, you need a flat, flatness reference. That tool plate is bolted to our Z-axis substrate. Uh, the substrate is what ties our, builds, our bed stack into the rest of the Z-axis. The Z-axis is driven by three lead screws. We've got uh, two in the front, one left, one right, and then one in the center, in the back. And then the z-axis is controlled, its horizontal position is controlled by uh, two linear rails, one on the left, one on the right. Underneath the um, z-axis and at the bottom of the printer is the z-axis drive belt. So this is a um, looped belt. We use one motor to drive all three lead screws, and that ensures they stay in sync. And so you'll see this belt make this loop around all three lead screws, an idler, and then the motor at the very back. All right, let's do a quick tour of the user interface for Edge. So full disclosure, this is not going to be a detailed uh, deep dive into every facet of the user interface. Uh, we've got a fantastic support document on the website that gives you all the details. My goal here is to give you an overview and show you how to navigate through the interface and generally where to find certain things and how to do certain things. So let's get started. Uh, what you see in front of you is the dashboard or the main screen. This is what you'll see when the printer is idle and also you'll see a version of this when you're running a print. So on the, and oh, also full disclosure, I'm running this in screen capture mode. I'm not actually filming an LCD. So you're not going to see my finger in the picture. You're going to see this little um, mouse type thing. 
So, okay, on the left side we have some file information and print time information. When we are running a print, these will automatically populate. In the center, you've got some uh, a blower control. You click this to start a print, and you load a file that way. Uh, load and unload filament, those are pretty self-explanatory. Speed factor, you can either speed up or slow down the entire print uh, in real time if you need to. On the left, or sorry, the right hand side, we've got three temperature dials. And these show you the temperatures for the print head, the bed, and the chamber. Now, the printer I'm filming this on does not have a temperature sensor attached to the chamber, so that's why it's showing zero. If you click on this little information icon, it'll give you a quick overview of how, how to, what all the information on the temperature gauge is and how to use it. So not only do you get a real-time readout of the temperature for each component, I can also manually set a temperature by pressing on the gauge and then clicking on a temperature. I can also type in a temperature if I don't want to use one of these presets here. So for example, I could type uh, 273 and press enter. And that. So what you'll see, while, the, while a uh, component is heating, you'll get a pulsing orange background on the temperature dial. Once it's up to temperature, you'll see that turn solid orange. I can turn that heater off by either selecting a, a preset as zero, or I can click all heaters off on the bottom. While a heater is cooling down, you'll see it pulsing blue. I can do the same thing for the bed as well. To get to the rest of the interface, you're going to use the menu icon in the top left corner here. The control screen allows me to manually home my axes and then jog them around. These jog controls will become enabled once you home the axes. You've got some extruder controls, you've got some bed probe controls, and then a readout of where the printer thinks it is. If you see zeros, that's because it's probably not homed and it doesn't actually know. The settings screen has three main components. Uh, host name allows you to see the name your printer is exposing to the network. You can also refresh or reboot the user interface through these buttons. In the top center, you've got some different options to set the system time. Uh, you've got some different system options. Again, I'm not going to go into detail here. We've got a help document about these on the website. System time can get a little weird. If you have your printer on a network, it's best to let this automatically grab the time from the network versus trying to manually set it. The network section down here, again, there's a detailed help document on the website, um, but you'll see a standard variant will have a LAN and a Wi-Fi entry, and then a secure variant will only have the LAN entry. These will show up even if they are not connected to a network. So for example, right here, my LAN connection is not actually connected, it's still going to show up. If I click on the configured IP, I can manually set my network um, information. Please don't do this unless you know what you're doing. Uh, it's best to leave that to the defaults and let it figure it out itself. Add Wi-Fi to add a Wi-Fi network, forget Wi-Fi to forget a Wi-Fi network. Pretty self-explanatory. Again, more details are in the help document on the website. The utilities menu has a few things in it. A console, this is the history from the printer. So for, uh, if you're, um, basically this collects messages, collects um, just errors, basically everything that happens on the printer is gonna get logged here. Um, this is persistent between reboots. So if you reboot the printer, this stays, which is very helpful for debugging. If you click on this menu icon, you can download this log to USB or download it to your computer. This is important because one of the first things we're probably going to ask you if you reach out to us with an issue is we're going to ask you for this log. The bed leveling screen shows your most recent height map and also gives you some buttons to run auto manual levels or the nozzle offset calibration. The temperature chart gives you a history of temperature over time for both the, well, for actually for all three heaters. Uh, this is useful for diagnosing heater issues or print quality issues or just weirdness with temperatures because you'll be able to see the change over time. The maintenance screen has uh, three big things. First is you've got some timers over here. Your power on time, total print time, your resettable print time, and then heater time are all counters that count um, how long the printers run. 
to use the resettable one can be used like a trip meter in a car. You can reset that uh, whenever you want to. The rest are persistent. Your maintenance timers are Bowden tube down. These count down to zero. And when they reach zero, you'll get a maintenance notification indicating that you need to perform a maintenance item. In the center, we've got uh, some help documents actually on board the machine. These are not the most up-to-date versions, so you should preferentially refer to our website versus using these. And then down here at the bottom, we have the self-diagnostic button. This will run the first run wizard again, and it can be helpful if you're encountering an issue that you're not sure quite what it is, or if you just need to run that again for some reason. The info screen gives us firmware information and version information. Uh, if we're helping you diagnose a strange issue, we may ask you for a picture of the screen so that we can see what version your machine is running. This copy system files button will copy all of your system files in, into a zip folder and you can send that to us if we need it. Finally, the webcam screen. This is, at the time I'm making this video, this is not formally released. This is a uh, feature coming soon. And this is an onboard webcam that will allow you to remotely see what the printer is doing. So if you click on that, you'll see a um, you'll see what the webcam sees. Now I've got this one configured strangely because it's on one of my test machines, so the image is sideways, um, and it's not really positioned correctly. But I was just doing some testing. So that's a quick run through of the user interface. Um, like I said, predominantly you're going to see the same information if you access the printer over the network using a computer. It's going to show you the same information. The user interface is going to look pretty much the same. You're going to navigate it the same. You are going to see a few more pieces of information just where we take advantage of the larger screen size.